module two your market hello welcome the success of any business is dependent on customers interest on such a business people rarely buy things just for the sake of owing them they buy things that fulfill their needs by solving problems or making them feel good therefore it is a worthwhile exercise to carry out market survey of the type of business you are interested in taking up in order to ascertain customers' position about it. Objectives of this session The aim of this section is to explain the need for and the way to conduct good market research. It will help you to understand market forces, position your business in the marketplace, Undertake market research for your business and analyze the data you collect and make effective decision. Market research Before you start off any business, you should ask yourself these questions. Define your position in the marketplace. Define your products or service. Know exactly what. Identify who your customers should be, their needs and expectations. Determine the price your customers will be prepared and able to pay. Identify the level of quality and service your customers require. Know who else offers such services, their strengths and weaknesses. Outline what best means to make your business known and how to do that. Remember that finding out what customers want and then providing them with it at a price profitable to you and acceptable to them increases your chance of success in such a business. Basic Market Research Steps Customer Profile Finding out detailed information about your customer, e.g. who are the buyers of your product or service likely to be, where are they located, how many are likely to buy, etc. Customers' Attitudes and Requirements Finding out why the customers should buy your product or service, e.g., why will they buy, what benefits are they looking for, etc. Competitions Finding out what exactly or similar products or service are being offered and by who and what are the complaints. Market size, volume and value. Finding out how much of the product or service would be demanded, sold, and at what price, e.g., how many existing or prospective buyers are there, how often are they likely to buy, what price will the buyer be willing to pay. Market Structure Finding out the marketing channels available, e.g., do you need to belong to an association before you could sell? Your competitor, do they sell on credit? Do you require having agents? ETC. What is the supply chain? Environmental forces. Finding out what factors affect your business directly or indirectly, e.g., political, economic trends, social issues, and technological. Other considerations. Finding out any other requirements necessary for your business growth and development. Are there any special regulations or standards to meet? With what legislation must you comply? Market forces Apart from the environmental, external forces mentioned, there are some inherent forces, internal forces that affect business success or failure. Positioning your business This is all about in-depth consideration of all the factors that will affect your business and being able to strategize and place your business in a vantage position against the other competitors. It also includes in-depth research following the basic market research steps provided and being able to analyze and interpret your data and make a risk-reduced decision that will be profit-oriented. Some of these issues include Profiling your customers Knowing your customers and targeting them accurately is important. What are your customers looking for? It is important to satisfy the needs of your customers. 
According to Abraham Maslow, all customers are goal seekers who gratify their needs by purchase and consumption. He classified consumers' need in a five-stage pyramid known as the hierarchy of needs. 1. Physiological hunger or thirst 2. Safety 3. Feeling of belonging 4. Self-esteem and 5. Self-realization and a sense of achievement Every product or service is bought to satisfy one or more of these needs. People graduate from one level of needs to another. Therefore, if your business does not meet the needs of your target people, customers, they will seek for satisfaction from somewhere else. This is why it is very important that you do the profile of your would-be customers. More so, understanding the markets ensures that you are alive to changes in, say, technology or customer preference. If you do not understand what you are really providing, you can be overtaken by competitors or by changing buying habits. Conducting Market Research Market research is observation, experimentation and asking questions, nothing else. Information about potential customers and competition can be collected in two ways using secondary information sources or carrying out primary research. Secondary research refers to research that has been conducted by other parties and to other published information. Primary research involves talking to and observing your customers, potential customers and others. This kind of research provides information that is specific to you and is concerned with the impact of your business on the market as well as that of your direct competitors. Market research is to assist you to make informed business decision. It gives you information on recent and forecast trends, the potential size of your market, level of demand for your products or service, and customer characteristic. Planning Conducting a market research requires planning on its own. It is necessary that you articulate yourself to know what you want and how to go about getting it. Market Research Planning Tips About your customers, decide what kind of information you require and how you want to get the information. About your competitors, identify who your competitors are, what do they offer and what is their strategy for reaching out to customers. How do you want to get information about them? About operations, identify your resources and how you want to mobilize the resources. Design questionnaire, test out the questionnaires, use sample techniques. Market trends, it is very important to know the market trend of your business in order to be able to plan and maximize your profit. For example, a poultry farmer who produces broiler has a different market trend from the farmer who rears layers. In Nigeria, broilers are sold mostly during festive periods like Christmas, Easter, etc. But eggs are sold almost evenly through the year. Therefore, it will be more profitable for the broiler farmer to target the festive periods for his or her production. Sales forecasting. Unlike existing business, new ventures will have no previous performance upon which to base any sales forecast. However, determining what level of sales you can expect to achieve is a crucial part of the planning process without this. You can have no real idea of whether your business will be able to make profit. One of the uses of the information generated from market research is forecasting of sales. Using the information will predict how much sales of your products or service are expected at a given time or period. In doing this, the following questions will be helpful. 1. Is the market expanding or contracting? 2. Are you planning additional marketing? 3. What is the likely effect of that? 4. Will you be putting up prices? 5. 
what will be the likely effect on sales. You need an idea of market size in order to work out how much of your production or service you can realistically expect to sell. Analyzing research information Before carrying out market research, decide the objectives of the exercise and at the end of the research, collate and analyze the information to compare with the objectives, whether met or not. Based on the results of the analysis, you can take decision about the business. There are many methods or tools for analyzing market research information. One of these methods is the SWOT analysis. S-W-O-T SWOT analysis Strength, Weakness, Opportunity and Threats The SWOT analysis is categorized into two external factors and the internal factors. The internal factors are mainly those factors that the business and you have absolutely controlled, while the external factors are those you and the business has little or no control of. Strength. This refers to what you are good at. Weakness. What are you not so good at or what you have no knowledge? Opportunity – Openings that can make your business to grow or succeed. Threat – Barriers to your growth, success that are found outside your business, e.g. A well-established business firm in your field will be a threat to your success if not considered. Marketing – Objectives – This section aims at helping you to segment your market Target your customers and position your business in the marketplace. Understand the four P's. Define your marketing objectives. Write your marketing plan and consider future developments. Marketing is a business discipline. It is a whole field of study. It is about finding and satisfying customers, identifying the need for a product or service and then providing it at the right time in the right place and at the right price. Marketing covers all aspects of your business, from defining your product or service to the identification of market opportunities and filling those opportunities at a price that covers your costs and generates a profit. Understanding the market you are into will help to position the business. How to position your business for the market? To define your market, market segmentation technique might be useful. In using market segmentation, you start with a broad or big picture of the market and break it into logical segments that differ. For example, buying habit, buying ability, location, etc. For example, sales of clothes could be segmented into two. 1. Broad sales of clothes. 2. Segments. Is it for women? Is it for men or children? More so, market segmentation could be done either using age, sex, status, business sector, etc. This will enable you to target adequately who is more likely to buy your product. However, note that market segmentation alone is not enough for a business to be successful. Rather, quality products or services are very important. Marketing Plan There are three stages in the process of preparing a marketing plan. The first involves reviewing your overall strategy to confirm the definition of your target customer and decide on the positioning strategy you want to adopt. This involves how you differentiate your products and services from those of your competitors. Secondly, you determine the impact of your targeting and positioning decisions on your strategy for the marketing mix. The marketing mix deals with such issues as product specification and development, pricing policies, delivery systems and promotional activity, and is sometimes referred to as the four P's. Thirdly, you review needs and prepare an action plan that states, using action-oriented statements, what will be done and when.
The four P's. Product specification and development. Pricing policies. Place delivery systems and promotional activity. Marketing comprises. Description of the products and or services you intend to sell. Mentioning salient points on benefits and advantages over your competitor. Definition of your target customers, including an explanation of why you believe they will buy the products or services. A section dealing with each element of the marketing mix, stating what you will do and why. An assessment of the resource implications of your plan, why and cost. Summary, action plan and timetable. Customer targeting and positioning your market. How you want to position your product, service in the marketplace as well as your approach to customer is directly related to your marketing strategy. Positioning is used to refer to how you want customer to view your product or service relative to those of your competitors. Positioning strategies Cost or price advantage Selling at what price difference to your competitors Differentiation Making difference by providing greater benefits Cost leadership Mass or high volume market In choosing your positioning, consider the following Are your competitors many or few? What strategy have they adopted? Do you have advantage over them? Are there notable differences that have created obvious riches? Are there any identifiable requirements that are not currently being met? Marketing Objectives It is necessary that for you to make progress, once you are clear about your target market and the position you want to take in the market, you define exactly the marketing objectives to guide you. It will be good to start with the purpose of the business. For example, to provide toys and games for children under 12 years old. To provide an environmentally friendly range of packaging materials for use in the food industry. This purpose could be translated into marketing objective like to achieve sales turnover in the first year of 800,000 Naira, to achieve profitability of 15% returns on sales by year 3. In setting your objectives, make sure you are realistic enough and not wishful thinking. More so, your objective should be quantifiable. Marketing Mix The 4 P's 1. Product Here, your target is to market a product or service that give customers satisfaction in terms of taste if required, packaging, quality, attractive, size, design, etc. It must have interesting features. 2. Price The target here is to make a product or service at a price that customer will be willing to pay. You must have to be able to get an indication of typical market pricing by comparing your products with equivalent competitive products as part of your research and this will help you decide whether to pitch your prices. Note that in fixing your price, cost of production must be covered in order to make profit. 3. Place This has to do with the delivery system, making your product or service available to customers. 4. Promotion This is about effective communication of the necessary information about your business to prospective customers so as to convince them in patronizing your business. However, there is a saying that quality product sells itself. This can be true if people know about the product. Action Plan It is necessary that you articulate your marketing activities and produce a workable plan which will indicate when each activities will be carried out. This is very important for you to meet up your target and achieve success. There are different ways of drawing up an action plan. The basic features are time, duration, length of time or activity is to be carried out.
Future Development a successful business could be defined as a business that makes profit as well as grow in size and increase in quality. Marketing growth opportunities are Market penetration Increase in sales as a result of increased marketing efforts. Market development Introduction of existing products into a new market. Product development Developing and improving products for existing market. Diversification. Identify opportunities for new products in new markets. Personal selling. Selling your own business, that is making it known to people, is a very important aspect of running a business. This is more of understanding the business and the customer as well as being able to communicate your business to prospective customers. Note that people buy solutions to problems and good feelings. Therefore, a business that does not meet this will not sell. Selling yourself and your business. Prospecting for and generating sales leads. The first and crucial step in selling is to identify prospective customers, prospects or who are the leads for your business. It is also vital that you continue to develop further leads. This you can do in various ways. 1. Making telephone sales ETC. 2. Asking current customers for names of potential buyers. Communicating the message. This include 1. Naming your business. The name of your business or product is a very important factor to consider because it is the first selling point of your business. 2. Your unique selling point USP You must identify a strong attribute of your product or service which you will use as a selling point. 3. Sales preparation First time impression is very important in selling yourself and your business. You must make adequate preparation when visiting a prospective customer. Get good sample of your product or service. 4. Sales Literature Every literature you leave must have all the basic information about your business. Negotiating and Closing the Sale Selling demands that you have effective negotiation skills to be able to negotiate price, buy, Discuss employment with your employee, wages, etc. When agreement seems eminent, do not start bargaining again. Close off the negotiation with good and encouraging words that will motivate your customer to place order. Immediately, formalize the order and take necessary information required for follow-up. Advertising for the first time Advertising is costly. Therefore, any business advertising for the first time must consider the most cost-effective method. All businesses need adverts in some way or the other. However, the method and volume of adverts might differ from small business to big business. For a small business, word of mouth to friends and relatives is an advert as well as going into print or electronic media. Whichever medium you want to use, what matters is the audience you want to cover and how best you can get across to them as well as how much it will cost you. You can advertise your business in the following ways. Print media, electronic media, posters, flyers or banners, sales letter, introduction letters, etc. Customer forced. What is service? Service is difficult to define because it is intangible. It cannot be weighed or measured. It can be sold but a customer cannot be supplied with a sample to take away and consider. It is perceived by different people or by the same person at a different time, in different ways. It is more emotional than rational. Service perception depends on customer's expectation, cultural background, etc. However, 
This does not mean that we can as well get on with it and do as we like because you just can't please people. Good service is about giving people a sense of well-being or meeting people's needs. As givers of service, you have the power to gain or lose new clients or customers, maintain or decimate the established client or customer base, make our lives and those of our customers much easier or much more difficult. Service attitude. Have you heard of comments like, I don't like going to such and such because their staff have got a bad attitude. Some customers have rejected products or services because of the attitude or approach of the staff, despite the satisfaction they get from the product or service. As much as people get satisfaction from the product or service, the right attitude or approach to the customer is an added value to the satisfaction derived from the product or service. Therefore, cultivating good customer relations is a vital factor for success of a business. What your customer expects. Someone who will listen. Someone who will solve their problem. And someone who will do what they say they will. On the other hand, the customer wants to speak to someone who is cautious, friend, understanding, informal, sincere, responsive, tolerant, smiling, open-minded, truthful, motivated, empathic and reliable study question what are the benefits of good services seven steps to great service say hello ensure you talk on what are responsible research the facts verify the facts initiate proposal commit to action and end transaction Service is not just about giving people what they want, although it's nice to do that when we can. Service is about the way we treat people, the way we make them feel as a result of doing business with us. A service giver should possess a good questioning skill to be able to get customer express his or herself very well. This is because a customer will walk into your business knowing what he or she needs but might not be able to express himself or herself very well. Also, the customer might not have a complete idea of what exactly he or she wanted. It is the responsibility of the service giver to question the fact out. Dealing with difficult situations When you are dealing with someone who is angry, it can be very tempting to apologize, even though at this stage you may not even know exactly what you are apologizing for. You may also be tempted to shout back or at the very least to let your displeasure show in your face or voice. Resist both of these temptations, although they are both perfectly natural when faced with an aggressor. It is human nature to either run away or fight back neither response will do in a service situation. What you must do is rise above it and not take it personally. After all, it isn't you that the customer is angry with. It is the situation. You just happen to be a convenient target. You still have to deal with it. However, if you ignore the anger, it is adding fuel to the flames. Instead, empathize with the customer. After all, it's perfectly normal to get angry when things go wrong. You can use phrases like, I can understand you're being angry. I am sure I will be too. Once the anger has been dealt with, start to get the facts. Use simple, direct, open questions to focus the customer on the situation rather than the emotion. Customer Service Strategy to ensure that we consistently put the customer first and provide higher quality customer service, there is need to formulate a strategy and such strategy should be integral part of the strategy for the business as a whole. Put in writing. Effectively communicated to all staff. Effectively communicated to all existing and potential customers. 
in order to meet customer needs. Firstly, establish as precisely as possible what the needs are. The best way to find out what is it that customers want, what they like about you, product, service, and what they don't like is to ask them or use questionnaires or forms. Also, a suggestion box will be helpful. It is not enough to have in place system of getting feedback from customers. It is more important to have a procedure of utilizing the feedback. Some facts about customer complaints. For every one customer who complains, an estimated further six don't come back. Every unhappy customer tells some six other people about the experience. For every customer that complains, you lost six others and further 40 or 50 people have heard bad reports about your business. This is the more reason why you should make effort to be nice and provide quality service products. Managing Quality a quality product or service is that which meets customer needs in terms of standard, cost, satisfaction, etc. Quality products or service have a long lifespan and give better satisfaction to customers. It does not necessarily mean bulk but the component and test of time, pressure and environmental forces, etc. It is the product that customer buys and come back to request for. Based on this, it is very necessary that quality policy is developed for your business and made known to staff and customers. To enable you develop a good or reliable quality policy, first articulate the objectives. You can develop some of the objectives based on feedbacks you get from customers. Therefore. Develop a customer feedback system to enable you generate information you require. Quality objective, like any other objective, should be smart. E.g., within six months, we will reduce customer complaints to less than one complaint per 100 sales. More so, objective should not be broad or big. Instead, break down objective into sub-objectives, activities, and timeline.